Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I'm your host, Scott Ramph, and I'm here to usher you into the weekend as uh, smoke starts clearing up in the air. So we'll get into that in a little bit. So let's uh, kick in. Uh, let's talk about what we're going to talk talking about today. Um, MCAT will be uh, streaming the uh, uh, the Big Sky High School football versus Sentinel High School football um, crosstown match tonight at 7.30 p.m. on our Facebook Live, so you'll be able to watch it there. So it'll be great. Um, we'll have some commentary, we'll have some videos, we'll have a bunch of uh, kids from each of the MCPS schools working cameras and working um, the tech on this very first game of the football season. Last year, we kind of did a soft, um, you know, like, it was kind of like, oh, if you're lucky to find it, you could find it, but this time we're going to be definitely be streaming it so you get a chance to actually watch it and enjoy that kind of stuff. Um, so you get to watch uh, your uh, either your uh, alumni from the, the Big Sky Eagles or alumni from the Sentinel Spartans. It is a great opportunity just to check out what the high school football teams are doing. And today it's looking like the weather is looking fairly good. Um, I'll, take, I'll talk about the smoke after I get into the weather. So let's throw it to weather. Oh, hold on one second. Let me see here. It was there just a second ago. All right, I'll have, to show, I'll have to show you guys some other time. Oh, never, never mind, there it is. It is currently 50 degrees outside. It's a little chilly out there. Um, you can expect highs into 85, you lows into 52. Uh, Saturday, things are gonna warm up a little bit over the weekend. Labor Day, it's supposed to get, go da back down to the 87. There were uh, red flag warnings over the, uh, the this week in terms of uh, wind that could also that would basically help fires um, continue on as well. So uh, let's talk about um, some of the uh, fires that happened here. Uh, so wait, 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 hold on a second. Okay, in um, in here's some things that happened in Glacier National Park. Uh, the a historic building burned down yesterday in Glacier National Park, Sperry Charlotte, which uh, which was located seven miles east of Lake McDonald in Nas Glacier National Park in. The in the U.S. state of Montana, the Charlotte was opened in 1914 uh, by the Great Northern Railway and was a national historic landmark c contributing property, being one of the one of five structures in the Great Northern Railway Building's National Historic Landmark. So uh, the Charlotte has been closed since August 15th after the discovery of the Sprague Fire, which was sparked by lightning storms on August 10th and tore through steep, heavily forested terrain that has not burned since 1700s, but not until Thursday, just last night, the closure was uh, couched as a matter of the fire posing a danger to trail access, not the Charlotte itself. With red flag warnings of wind throughout the last couple days, a gust of wind was able to carry the fire, fire and, and by 6 p.m. last night, uh, Sperry Charlotte was engulfed in flames. Uh, officials say that this kinds of weather conditions are expected to continue throughout the weekend, um, especially in those areas. But in Missoula, we're expecting a little bit of break with all the, sm uh, with all the smoke that's in the air. So let's take a look at uh, the Montana uh, DEQ, Department of Environmental Quality. Um, it's a great uh, website, which I always refer to, which you can find out how much the smoke conditions are. So far, it's moderate conditions, and you can uh, you can see from the map down here as well that uh, it's going to pretty much stagger throughout the day. Um, usually, it doesn't get too high, uh, but we are expected to have some winds, but y you never know. So it is currently at 18.7 particulate matter that are in the air um, being contributed by the smoke. So that's kind of what's happening there. So let's switch gears from the fire and the weather, and let's talk about a, a, a news item that was just recently here. Um, two young girls who vandalized a sculpture at the Missoula Art Park have confessed and expressed regrets, according to the Missoula Art Museum. And of course, not to mention that the picture was taken as well. So if you could get to take a look, this is one of the girls. Oh, actually, these are both of the girls climbing up one of the wooden sculptures you see the, uh, it's in the art park. And they did this um, on Friday, August 25th, which was last, uh, I believe it was like last Thursday night between 12.30 and 1 p.m. Um, here is basically them um, messing with a couple other, with another sculpture just outside the uh, Mizzou Art Museum. Yeah. Um, there is uh, there were some extensive damages to the uh, certain sculptures that uh, a couple of them had to be removed completely as a fact. Uh, so 
that's kind of what's been happening here in and around Missoula. I, uh, let's see, I have a new program um, that I made with Steve Glucker just this Monday. It's from Black Owl Tattoo, and it's, uh, it's one of the episodes of Look Before We Speak, and we're talking about art that people put on their bodies. So here's a little tease of what you guys can watch on Look Before You Speak, and when I come back, I'm going to talk about more art, and then we're going to get into some more things later on the show. This is kind of like a uh, less formula, formula show than I have done in the past, so I'm going to kind of keep it rolling. So here is uh, Steve Glukert with uh, Black Owl Tattoo. Uh, the owner of Black Owl Tattoo is going to spend some time with us talking about tattoo and, and Missoula and uh, some of the images that are proliferated and uh, incorporated uh, onto different kind of canvas. Jeez, 92, 93 around there? Okay. I can't remember, somewhere around there, yeah. That's great, and the business has grown over that time. Oh yeah, yeah, oh yeah. And then uh, tattoo, like this shop has been here like seven years. Uh, I've been tattooing before that in another shop and stuff, so yeah, I've always I've been into art. Which one would you like to talk about first? Oh, uh, like, well, like this, for instance, I wish I had a little a better image, but this is a cover-up of a tattoo, and it, it kind of takes you through the stages of how a cover-up works. You can kind of see underneath there was something there. Oh, yeah, there's there's a lot, a lot of certain tattoos, depending on what, what it is style-wise, works great with the way the body flows and stuff, you know, so you, you make it work with what, the way the muscles are laid out and all that, yeah. and, uh, yeah. yeah, and uh, I make various versions of that for people. You know, they'll let me know on what, what they want to use it for, like, because all these images have certain needle groupings to put the ink into the skin, and mm -hmm. I will build the machine off of that, so. All right, so that was uh, Mike Schaefer with Black Owl Tattoo. He talks a little bit more extensively about some of its tattoos and some of his uh, pamphlet uh, of his old tattoos back in the day. But right now, what he usually does is he makes uh, needles, um, those um, basically those uh, tattoo needles. I'm totally butchering. I have no idea what those are called. But he uses those, he banks those, manufactures those, and he sells them across the world. So I think that's really cool, and that's a great program that you guys should check out. It's on video on demand, so if you want to find out more information, you could go to MCAT.org. It is a great resource for anybody looking to get involved with MCAT. Um, we do trainings here at MCAT Wednesdays at 5.30 p.m. for anyone interested in joining MCAT and learning a, bit, a little bit of videography and learning about a little bit of the list and a little bit of that. Um, you can find out more information about my morning show by going on to wakeupmissoula.wixsite.com slash wakeupmissoula. And also, MCAT is also a great resource for you to watch any uh, live videos that we're going to be uh, broadcasting. So if you can't see it on any of our uh, YouTube or Facebook, you can find it on our local live channel just at this link right here at MCAT.org. So let's switch gears and let's talk about some of the art that's going to be coming through um, Missoula. So it's first Friday today, September 1st, and we're let's talk about some of the art that's coming through here. We're, we're kicking it off with uh, um, at Lake Missoula Tea Company, um, John Mayer is the executive director of Bozeman-based Cottonwood Environmental Law Center. He is a graduate of UM and decided to go to law school after working for the Flathead National Park, National Forest. Sorry, uh, John's photography is inspired by people, forest, water, and wildlife. He seeks to protect. U.S. Senator Steve Daines calls one of John's uh, recent legal victories for the Endangered Species Act disastrous. Playing um, will be the. Uh, um, Irish session, a local Missoula band headed by Laura Lundquist. So that's kind of what's happening there. You can give him some support even by showing up. But uh, First Friday is a great way for people to get out there and enjoy some um, art and also drinks and hors d'oeuvres. Moving on, we got some uh, Randy Zelinsky at Gecko Designs. A Study in Color is a collection showcasing Randy Zelinsky's masterful uh, art, um, art, sorry, it's uh, Argyle, Argyle, no, sorry, uh, man. I'm ha I have trouble with certain art terms. So uh, the work features the vibrant colors of um, vel velvety flowers and dreamlike images. Join us for an evening of great art, great company, and refreshments. So uh, moving on, they got Cow Cowboy Quad Arts. They're having the first Friday event um, today from 5 to 7 p.m. at um, 
Excelsior Count Consulting LLC. Mitchell McCab is a artist who draws with his mouth, bringing out perspectives of awe and shock. He will. De um, he describes his art and his life story at 6:15 p.m. He's a quadriplegic. He faces many challenges daily. In his free time, he likes to escape into the world of art. Art is his passion and is uplifting and freeing. His artwork focuses on traditional culture and Montana's beautiful landscapes from the high mountains to low plains. He uses pencils, charcoal, ink, and is experimenting with new style. Uh, Mitchell will have his artwork displayed and you will have a chance to purchase it at the event. So it's at Excelsior Consulting. And all these events are happening from 5 to 8 p.m. during the art walk. Um, here is some more art. This is color and line um, Prismacol Prismacolor um, by Carol Hoffnagel. So at Gallery 709, inside Montana Art and Framing, um, line and color, uh, prism of color drawing um, is happening from today all the way into the 29th. So if you miss it today, you can still have a chance to look for it all the way into the 29th. Originally from New York, Carol spent many years printmaking, painting, and drawing in California. Her art has been widely published, exhibited in galleries throughout the country, licensed and in needlepoint designs, and repeated on textiles and ceramics. Carol's note cards, posters, calendars, have been sold all over the world. Carol and Peter Kiefer opened Studio 12 Art for a time in downtown Missoula. Carol's flowers and architecture designs look like painting but are created with color pencil. This first Friday event is happening today and it, oh, it's going to be on from 5 to 9 p.m. today. So if you do uh, our downtown, you guys can jump on down to the 709 Gallery. It's um, it's I think it's near the Eagles Lodge, so you mean that it's quite a, a distance away from downtown Missoula, but it's definitely worth the trek. It is a great place. Um, I went there for look before you speak. It is a great um, and the curator is awesome as well. Um, moving on, this is uh, Lillian Nelson. Um, their title, What Goes In, and this is going to be at E3 Convergence Gallery. Um, they are uh, so what goes in is pieces together a repurposed raw wood material into a assemblies um, using them unique painting surfaces creating a traditional painting with sculpture qualities in the series Nelson delves into the f um, psychological and spiritual ramifications of how our outside world affects us and what we produce with the things we let into our minds and souls so that's gonna be at E3 Convergence Gallery starting at 5 p.m. tonight this is uh, art by Elizabeth Dove, and this can be at the Missoula Art Museum. Join them. The, she, she, um, she is the University of Montana Professor of Art um, to view her exhibit. Um, it started with uh, Aardvark and, um, and listened to gallery talk by the artist at 7 p.m. The, uh, the central recurring themes uh, that Dove's works are memory, uh, the passing time, and the search for meaning. She integrates the process of printing and her experience of creating with the content of the finished material. Um, th moving on, the next art we got here is Texturally Inspired, um, which is at the Artist Shop, and it's going to be uh, contemporary calligraphy in broadsides and books. New acrylics, so that's the word I was looking for, is acrylics. I can't read it, but I can say it. Okay, so New Acrylics by Nancy Sealer, um, Missoula Symphony Association, and you can join them from 5 to 6.30 p.m., so it's going to be a little shorter. Their 63rd annual season, uh, 63rd season with paintings from Nancy Sealer uh, and violin uh, music by Kalia Horat. Uh, feel free to bring lawn chairs and blankets as music will be outside. Um, it is um, from the... Art Attic Framing Design Show, an eclectic mix of 2D art e for a visual treat, including oil and acrylic painting, mixed media collage, and wood printing by Emily Hall, uh, A. A. Elliott, Frank Anderson, and Katie Machan. And this is um, basically Missoula Symphony Association, so that's going to be there. And that kind of concludes everything that you guys need to know about what's happening for Art Walk. There's a lot more on there as well. I but I wasn't able to uh, put their photos up on the side, so I didn't show you. So you can find out those and more by going to uh, by looking for the hashtag First Friday at MissoulaEvents.net. So here's some art. Um, here is a whole brand new art clip from our very own um, Rick Phillips, who uh, got this um, footage, and this art is by Bev Glukert, and it's called A Fine and Pleasant Day.
welcome back. And that was from um, art um, traffic signal boxes, which they paint through the Public Art Committee. If you are interested in being involved with the Public Art Committee, you can contact them through the City of Missoula's website, ci.missoula.mt.us. And I got another uh, uh, City Council report for you guys, but it's really short. So don't worry about it. It's great. It's wonderful. It's. I think this is uh, definitely one of my favorite uh, quotes thus far, and it's from um, uh, Janet Van Forsen. Um, who gives a compliment, but also, you know, like with most public comments, it's never uh, uh, all the way. So I, here is a, a comment from the Budget Committee from Van, uh, Janet Van Fossen. I've com been communicating with Marty Rabine on the two special assessments, and she's been an absolute um, perfect example of what transparency in government should look like. She has provided me with er an answer to every single question that I've had and has given me access to um, all the printouts having to do with the special assessments. And I, I'm sorry she left because I wanted to express my gratitude. I really, as, as a citizen, I really do appreciate that kind of responsiveness. The second thing is that now I know what my special assessments are going to be for uh, this uh, tax year. And I had told you that they were up 700% uh, as of last year. Well, they're up 900 percent as of this coming year. Small amounts, but the, the growth trend is um, one that is not very, very encouraging as a taxpayer. So I did want to give you those two pieces of feedback, one good and one, from my perspective, not so good. All right. Thank so um, that was uh, Janet Van Fossen and giving her comment. Uh, she gave a comment on Monday's night's meeting about the same issue as well. Um, other than that, nothing really happened except the city drew, uh, we're basically uh, talking about a, uh, a stripping, um, does, uh, the stripping in Linda Vista and how they want to draw the lines when they're uh, basically remaking the road and they want to make it a little more available for bikers and also finding a way so people don't park uh, in the bike lanes. So that was like a huge discussion. It was long. It, I don't know. Like I, I didn't wanna, really want to do it. Uh, from what from what I heard, it was basically that whole thing. And that was it was a huge debate. And I did report on it a couple weeks ago about the whole kind of issue about how like Bancroft also has other issues about this and that and that. Um, I think one of the solutions were if you put up a crosswalk, there's no actual parking allowed to be five car lengths away from where the crosswalk is. So that's one solution to help deter some parking as well. They come up with different designs and they're trying to figure out ways so they can come up with the bike lanes. So the whole idea is it's like you have your bike lanes and then on just on the outside of the bike lanes is where the cars can park and whatnot. So that's what they're talking about in terms of Linda Vista, but I wanted to spare you guys uh, that um, city council report. So that's that. Um, let's see what I got here. I do have, uh, I think this is the, one of the last um, video. Actually, it's not necessarily the last video, but it's the. Here is a. This is a very long um, feature it film that I promised I was going to show you on Wednesday, and it stars the kids from the Boys and Girls Club. They put three days worth of acting and effort into making this video possible. I think it's wonderful. They did a really good job, and I'm going to share it with you today. And then when I come back after about 12 minutes, I'm going to talk about the events that are happening in the city of Missoula. So stay with me, and here is the premiere of Clowning Around. Hey, can I use your phone in the back? I have to call my parents. Oh, yeah, sure. Go ahead. It's right back there. Dial 9 and call out. Hey, can you come pick me up? It's not an emergency, we just got done. Today we have a special guest named Megan that's going to talk about 
the killing scenes that have been happening in Las Vegas. Tell us from your words what have been happening. So, this random person literally just got killed and the body was mutilated. And it had just very weird cuts. But this guy was shorter, just way shorter than typical shortness, not saying he's a midget. It was just small, at least two feet high. So if you see random two feet tall people walking through your neighborhood, call 911 immediately. Coming up next on Luna's Corner, what is PC correct? So did you hear about that death that happened? It was just a couple blocks away from here, actually. Did you know the guy? <sighs> no, I didn't. What about you? No, not really. I don't have too much relatives or friends. Uh, yeah, that was crazy. I can't believe what happened. Hey, guys, were you missing um, back there? No. The studio? No. Yeah, I heard some weird laughter over the monitors, and I was just wondering if it was you guys. We just had a break from some more. It might be from the auxiliary room where they play the intro and stuff. That's the soundboard for everything. Yeah, it's just right down the hall there, uh, two door, two doors down to your left. That's what the theater stuff. I don't know. It's, it's just for like the theater group when they do their addition. When they do their like things and stuff. I don't really know. Hey, what you doing? Um, I'm going to the audio room. Someone pulled a prank on me, so I just want to go check it out. Hmm. Right. Oh. Right. Right on time. Have any questions, or if I have any questions, we have each other's numbers. So. Okay. Well, the car broke down, so we're gonna have to take the bus. Are you serious? We have to take the bus with all the random smelly citizens, hobo people. Oh well, yeah, people are people. You gotta put a label on it. It does make it easier. Whatever, let's go. Gosh darn it, where is that darn thing? <sighs> hey! Uh, well, what are you doing? I just came looking for you. We can't find our way out of here. Well, just follow the exit sign. Well, there aren't any. Okay, well, come with me. Oh, that's weird. There should be a uh, exit sign right here. Well, anyways, let's just go up this hall. No way am I going up that. No big deal. It's just a dark hallway. Well, I'm not going to die. Well, anyways, we can just go through the studio. It's no big deal. Hey, where are you guys going? Um, we're going to the studio. 
don't you know Luna gets pretty pissy when you go through her studio? The power went out in the hallway. Again? Yeah. Uh, oh, well. Uh, you thinking what I'm thinking? We should run. Let's go check. Uh, that's what I thought you'd say. Luna! I is she okay? Nope. She's gone. It, it, what what happened? She was attacked. Attacked? I mean, I know some people don't like her. It's just she didn't really deserve this. Well, that's a suspicious thing to say. Ready to go check this out? Yeah, yep. it is done. Oh, oh okay. Yeah, no. We should just take the other room. It's Bye. it's just a toy. I mean, look at this. Come on. Um, okay. <laughs> this thing's kind of cute. I mean, like, I don't know about this. Oh, oh, oh cute! Don't look at it. Okay, that's it. Don't do it. I would never kill Luna. She's the reason that I got this job in the first place and jump started my career for me. We gotta call the police. Well, um, first of all, we should probably get out of here. Because we saw this guy's Help. story. Eh. What's, What's going, going on? on? What are you guys doing here? I thought you left. We can't. Luna's dead. We have to call the police. Wait, Luna's dead? Where is she? Where is she? She's gone. The clown took her. Clown? What clown? The, the same clown that got Derek. There was a clown? He was probably the one who came up on the police. <laughs> for a second.
I'm sorry, Megan. Hey guys, welcome back. Let's talk about some events that are happening in and around the city of Missoula. So, starting this morning at the Southgate Mall, there's a Dahlia show um, known for their full and brightly colored blooms. Dahlias are a treat for anyone to see. The Dahlia show showcases blooms cultivated by Missoula and area gardeners. And you can check that out. It's going to be organized by the Five Valley Dahlia and Glad Society. So check out some flowers. It's going to be at the Southgate Mall. So if you happen to be there, this would be another uh, um, extra treat for you guys. Uh, Northwest Inland Permaculture Con Convergence. Jeez. Uh, many locations throughout town. You're invited to attend the 7th Inland Northwest Permaculture Convergence, blah, blah, blah. This is going to be in Hot Springs, Montana. And it's happening all week long. For uh, it, it's a caravan of people will be traveling 50 mile, 55 miles to Hot Springs, and there are plenty of carpooling available. Uh, bring the family and tour local permaculture gardens and farms. Attend workshops. Learn from leaders on the um, on um, on the edge of design and appropriate technology technologies and exchange ideas. There will be big emphasis on growing and using mi municipal herbs this year. The children's program is provided by Ravenwood Outdoor Learning Center. Permaculture is the development of agricultural ecosystems intended for sustainable and self-sufficient and can be applied to both urban and rural living. So the whole idea of this thing is planting things where you don't have to maintain them. So the whole idea is you plant them and they're just like, just set them and forget them. That's the whole idea. <laughs> that permaculture. Set them and forget them. Anyways, moving on sound um it, they're talking about some sound um at the spectrum discovery center and this is at 11 a.m um starting this morning it's 350 for anyone four and over if you're under three you get in free so each day is a new theme at the spectrum discovery center today they're learning about sound um water culture painting class um is public library uh, is um hosting their uh weekly event at 12 noon and this is, happens from 12 to 2 p.m um so you need, may need to get a, a lunch before you go ahead on hand so you go with um, local artist Robert Peltzner, so that's Rob P, if you don't remember that, will help you understand and develop the skills and techniques necessary to enjoy and succeed in at watercolor painting, open to adults age 18 and older, uh, bring your own water, watercolor paper, paints, brushes, and palette, palettes. For questions, you can call Robert at 258-3867 uh, and leave a message. Teen Writers Group is also at the Missoula Public Library this afternoon, right after school at 3.30 p.m. Uh, hone your writing skills, improve your writing skills. Um, writing is a lost art among many people, including myself. <laughs> writing is another thing, and especially creative writing is a way to engage kids in an opportunity to uh, improve their writing skills, because that's one of the things that seems to be happening throughout the um, throughout the world, I mean, like especially um, from what I've noticed, even in myself. Um, the Montana Scene Grand Opening is, is happening at 5 p.m. at the Montana Scene. They are throwing a party in honor of the grand opening, the prizes, an hour, and free beer from Lolo Peak Brewing Company, and this is at the Montana Scene uh, Grand Opening. So John Angen is doing a campaign office opening, so he's campaigning for mayor uh, once again, for re-election, and he can join the official campaign for an official office opening, chat with the mayor, John Engen, about his vision for Missoula, and stock up on the bumper stickers. Here's some local music, beverages, and snacks will be served. Drop in, say hello, and learn how you can help them in coming months. So there are many different things happening today, uh, uh, but of course it is First Friday, and I kind of give you the rundown for First Friday, so I'm just going to kind of end it right there. Those are basic the basic events that are happening. So let's talk about some of the... Uh, nightly events and some of the musical events that you guys can go to tonight as well. So kicking it off uh, tonight is there's a no cover back to school with Matt Jackson and John August at the VFW. Dodgy Mountain Men will be at the Old Post Pub at 6.30 p.m. Drop Culture at the Badlander for First Friday. Dusk is going to be at the Sunrise Saloon and the Shiver is going to be at the Union Club. So you can check all those out by going to MissoulaEvents.net. But here is another art clip for you guys, and this is another one being featured at the Missoula Art Museum.
Well, for another month, um, the Missoula's Farmer's Market, People's Market, Clark River Market will be going on. So you still have a chance to check all those out from 8 to 1 p.m. So 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. starting tomorrow morning. You can check that out. But also, robotics is happening at the Spectrum Discovery Center, part of their um, new topic every single day of learning and education for all ages. Um, Saturday, apple picking at Moon Randolph Homestead. So they're doing some apple picking now. Tis the season for apple picking. So usually that's kind of like the transition in from the summer to the fall seasons. Hopefully the fall will also bring in some of the fall rains to help put up these fires. But let's not get into that right now. It's, there's a lot of that going on here. Okay, so Western Cider and Moon Randolph Ho Homestead are equal to bring you a community cider with over 125 years in the making. Around 1890, Ray and Lu uh, Lula Moon planted apple apple trees on the west facing slope of their calm of their of their claim the northern hills so the claim means they're homesteaders they're whatever anyways the heritage trees they planted macintosh uh, wine snap and the and duchess still produce fruit of fine quality for cider making this fall apples picked from the homestead trees will be pressed and fermented to make a cider of unique historical uh, prevalence of uh, prevalence prevalence mm, as pr i'm not smart Anyways, as the fruit root <laughs> ripens, we'll be shaking it down every Saturday, um, now through the end of September, to make it into cider, as well as press the homestead's largest fundraiser, the Fall Gathering. They need your help to bring this fruit down off the trees, and you can join them every Saturday, August through September, basically starting, uh, basically pretty much already started, but this is going to be from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. at the Moon Randolph Homestead, 1515 Spurlock Road, in Missoula, length of picking will depend on the fruit's ripeness and availability. Labor Day weekend music at Frenchtown Pond State Park. Celebrate Labor Day weekend at Frenchtown State Park with the music by the Great Depression. Uh, I mean, music about the Great Depression. Sorry, there's so many different band names. The Great Depression sounds like it also could be a band name too. But they're talking about music from the Great Depression. Enjoy family fun during the Bill Rutzner's program. Brother, can you spare a dime? Songs and some fibs and yarns from the Dirty 30s at Frenchtown Pond State Park on Saturday, August 5th from 7 to 8 p.m. Um, this event is free, open, open to the public, and great for all ages, so you can bring your kids and enjoy some musical events from the 1930s. Um, let's talk about some of the events that are happening Saturday night. So, um, Latin Dance Nights at the Downtown Dance Collective, and also La um, Downtown Dance Collective is having a first Friday. I was unable to get a over-the-shoulder thing, so tonight at you can go to Downtown Dance Collective for some art installations. Um, once again, Latin Dance Nights at Downtown Dance Collective, 8 p.m., um, absolutely with Chris Moon, Badlander, Karaoke at VFW, Cash for Junkers at the Sunrise Saloon, and Full Grown Men Band is going to be at the Union Club. You have to be full grown. You have to be 21 up to go to a lot of these venues. So that's I, that's usually why I kind of mull over them. I just kind of want to uh, talk about the events that are engaging to pretty much all ages. So uh, if you want to find out more information, you go to MissoulaEvents.net. I do have one more event I want to talk about for Sunday. Yes, Sunday. I never talk about Sunday because Sunday is Sunday. German Fest is happening at Karis Park at 2 p.m. German Fest is free Montana German Festival. Mm, who would have known? It, it happens each fall in Missoula. This year, German Fest, uh, once again, uh, will be held on Sunday, September 3rd in 2017 in Karis Park. German Fest uh, is a celebration of German culture, obviously, and um, in Missoula Sisters, Sisters City relationship with um, Nacke German blah, in Germany. Sorry, I'm just totally butchering that name. I'm just gonna like turn to the skid. It is a premier Montana German festival in the state, um, hence why it's called German Fest. Uh, highlights include traditional food, music, and beer. Special cool musical jest, uh, jest. Sorry, special musical guest S. Bonn. Um, S. Bonn brings traditional. German music with a modern twist with a diverse and um, eclectic repertoire. Eclectic seems to be a, a theme, with uh, especially with First Friday. Um, S. Bonn specializes in Oct Oktoberfests and Malakas, um, Ukrainian and German music. Um, Missoula is pleased to welcome this exciting new addition to German Fest, sponsored by Baron Brewing of Missoula. So German food and beer. German Fest, you know, you got plenty of sauerkraut as far as the eye can see. You got a bunch of people wearing... Um, uh, later hosen. That's a, that's a good theme. Um, and then there's gonna be a lot of beer. Yeah, it's German fest. There's gonna be a lot of stuff, a lot of um, beer uh, featuring German uh, German fest. German fest is also looking for volunteers. So if you're interested in getting involved with German fest, you can contact them at www.artsmissoula.org/germanfest for more information. You can call. Um, 
oh, what's his name? Oh, man, Whew, over my head. But yeah, just call Arts Missoula. It is the premier arts and culture um, nonprofit organization here in town that promotes arts and also helps uh, promote the economy in Missoula by engaging arts to bring people together in Missoula Cultural. So what was formerly the Missoula Cultural Council is now Arts Missoula. I'm assuming they don't want us I uh, want me to mention Missoula Culture Council because they want that as far behind them as possible because it's Arts Missoula. So go to artsmissoula.org slash germanfest or you can look at the link at artsmissoula.org. It, it, um, German Fest is happening on Sunday, 2 p.m. It's going to be great. I'm going to linger on a little bit more because they say German Fest about 12 different times in their own synopsis. So you can't forget about German Fest, 2 p.m. at Karis Park on Sunday. So, um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Let me just uh, give you the runner, uh, this the run over for um, your art, uh, I mean for your smoke. Um, so it's currently standing at um, 18.7 um, in terms of, it, it looks like it's getting a little bit higher since the last time I checked earlier this morning, it's at 21.6. So it's moderate, so it's not as, uh, the next level is unhealthy for uh, sensitive groups. And then after that, it becomes unhealthy for everybody. And then it becomes, um, so th there's a whole list and everything. But you guys can check out that out by g looking up svc.mt.gov. It is a great way to find out more information from the Montana.gov DEQ, Montana Department of Environmental Quality. So it's a great way. Um, the smoky season, it's a great way to um, gauge and see whether or not it's a good time to go outside. Today might be one of the only days you'll get a chance to go outside until the fires are over with. So today looks like it's going to be a perfect day. And tonight I, I will be commentating um, for uh, the Big Sky versus Sentinel High School. Um, our commentators won't be here this weekend for one reason or another. Don't want to get into that, but I'm going to be basically talking about sports, and I have no idea. I have no idea what I'm doing. So you're going to hear me say uh, about half a dozen to a dozen. Um, boom goes the dynamites, and this and that. Me butchering your child's name if you have a football player, uh, grandchild, or son in there as well. So it's going to be an interesting experience. And why not join me on our Facebook page? You go to Missoula's Community Media Resource. I'll tag all the right tags. I'll put all the at signs and all the hashtags together, and we'll be able to um, do the sports thing. So uh, wish me luck, and I hope you guys have a wonderful day. It is going to be a great weekend. Hey, maybe I'll go apple picking this weekend, and why don't you join me? So for Wake Up Missoula, I'm Scott Ramp. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you Wednesday. Thank mm -hmm. you.